we make the soil base stable and strong before constructing any structure on it and the process of doing so is called compaction compaction is done by increasing soil's density by decreasing the volume of air voids in it it is done using heavy machinery and equipments compaction is measured using dry unit weight or dry density of soil higher the dry density higher is the compaction dry density of soil is nothing but density of soil when it is in completely dry state which means no water is present in its pores so the dry density of soil is mass of soil solids only divided by its volume our aim is to compact the soil as much as possible using easier and cost effective methods there are several factors that influence the soil compaction by identifying and managing these factors we can maximize compaction levels with ease ensuring a more effective and cost efficient approach to our goal let's discuss some of these factors affecting the soil compaction let's begin with water content soil scientist and civil engineer r r proctor devised an experiment named after him as a standard proctor test in the test soil is compacted by adding different amount of water content to it and respective dry densities obtained are recorded the obtained data is plotted in a curve that is known as compaction curve the relationship observed between the dry density of soil and water content present was explained by lubrication theory at low water content the soil is stiff and soil grains offer more resistance to compaction as the water content is increased water acts as a lubricating agent and helps particles move more easily to achieve denser configuration this way dry density of soil begins increasing the dry unit weight continues to increase till a maximum value is reached then if we keep on adding the water to the soil the dry unit weight begins to decrease because now water begins to occupy the space that otherwise might have been occupied by the soil particles so in the compaction curve we can notice that soil achieves its maximum dry density or we can say soil is most compacted at a certain moisture content known as optimum moisture content this means when we are working in the field it's best to compact the soil at this specific moisture content then there is another factor amount of compaction or compactive effort compactive effort refers to the energy applied to compact the soil often measured in terms of a weight or force per unit area this energy can be generated by the weight of construction equipments like rollers or through other compaction methods the greater the compactive effort the more force there is to push out air and to reduce air voids and that makes the soil denser solid and stable so the level of compactive effort directly influences how well the soil gets compacted the compaction curve received is unique for a given soil type method of compaction and compactive effort if we increase or decrease the compactive efforts the dry unit weight and hence the compaction of soil will increase or decrease respectively higher the compactive effort higher is the maximum dry unit weight and lower is the optimum moisture content this means we need less amount of water to compact the soil to help it achieve its maximum dry density 
This phenomena is also evident when we compare compaction curve obtained by a standard Proctor test to that of a modified Proctor test. We know that compactive efforts in the modified Proctor test are higher than in standard Proctor test. We can see the compaction curve shifts to the top and to the left when the compactive effort is increased. We should also note that the maximum dry unit weight doesn't keep on increasing with an increase in compactive effort. The margin of increase for a certain increase in compactive effort gets smaller and smaller, especially on the dry side of the optimum moisture content, while on the wet side there is hardly an increase at all. Hence, to achieve optimum compaction, one needs to find a right balance. Next factor is type of soil. Soils are generally classified into different types based on their particle size and composition. Upon compaction, maximum dry unit weight achieved and respective optimum moisture content is different for different soils. Coarse grain soils like sand usually achieve higher dry unit weight when compact compared to fine grain soils such as clay. It happens because of the fact that fine grain soils with their small flaky and plate like particles tend to have more void spaces between the particles even when compacted. These void spaces reduce the overall density of soil resulting in a lower dry unit weight. But when we introduce even a small amount of fine particles to coarse grain soil, it significantly increases the dry unit weight with the same compactive effort. It happens simply because fine soils fill the voids in the coarse grain soils. However, if we add more fines than necessary to fill the gaps, the maximum dry density decreases. Cohesive soils, which are fine grain soils, need more water for compaction, resulting in a higher optimum moisture content. Also, they exhibit a very low dry density. Finding the right balance in the soil composition is key to achieving optimal compaction results. Next factor is related to this one and that is gradation of soil. We just discussed that adding some amount of fines to coarse soils improves its dry density as fines fill the voids of the coarse grain soils. By doing so, we improve the gradation of soil. And it is evident that a well graded soil achieves a much higher dry unit weight than a poorly graded soil. A well graded soil is a good mix of particles of different sizes. A poorly graded or a uniform sand leads to a lowest dry unit weight. Then there is another factor that affects the compaction of soil and that is bulking of sand. While compacting the soil, we should keep in mind that pure sand soils exhibit completely different behavior on compaction because of the property of sand called bulking of sand. Bulking of sand is increase in sand's volume while they come in contact with the water. This bulking of sand has been discussed in detail in our earlier video. Find the link in the description. Method of compaction also influences the compaction of soil. In the laboratory tests, we usually compact soil samples using impact methods. However, in the field, compaction methods we use may be rolling, kneading, vibrational or impact types. Each method of compaction applies different forces and energy to the soil, which affects its density in unique ways. As a result, each compaction method produces its own compaction curve. Consequently, there may be variations in optimum moisture content and maximum dry density values among the various compaction methods. For the same amount of compactive effort, the maximum dry unit weight will depend upon the chosen method of compaction. In addition to all the factors that we discussed, there are many other factors that influences the compaction of soil. For example, 
When we compact the soil for a fill, we do it in layers. If these layers are thicker, they need more passes or a greater compactive effort to achieve the desired level of compaction. Soil's initial density also affects the compactive efforts required. Loose soils generally require more compactive effort than a soil that is already dense. Also, compacting soils with high stone content may require more energy as stones resist compression more than soil particles. This increased resistance can necessitate additional compaction effort. In addition to that, it can be challenging to achieve consistent compaction density throughout the soil profile if these stones are irregularly distributed. Mineral composition of soil particles also plays a significant role in compaction. Certain minerals in the soil have a natural affinity for water molecules. They can attract water and hold it close to their surfaces and contribute to the soil's moisture retaining capacity, affecting factors such as optimum moisture content and compaction density. All these various factors play a crucial role in compacting the soil. Understanding and managing these factors is essential for achieving effective compaction, ensuring a stable foundation for construction projects. You can find the links of books and other sources I referred for the creation of this video in the description. Thank you for your love and support. Also thank you very much members and patrons of Elementary Engineering for supporting this channel monetarily. Read Factors Affecting Compaction of Soil at elementaryengineeringlibrary.com All the links are in the description. Thank you.